I meant like right now there's only two. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey guys. How's everyone doing today? It's good to see you. Welcome back to the show. And we got a great crew. I see all kinds of faces, so many familiar faces coming on right now. Hello and good morning to all of you guys. It is a great morning. I got my dinosaur coffee mug right here that I use every morning. And I want to thank you for being here. For those of you who are just joining us, my name is Mr. Billy, Billy the Paleontologist, and I run Fossil Posse Adventures. And what we do is we study and teach and celebrate and have fun with everything prehistoric, mostly dinosaurs, but that's what we do. We look for dinosaurs, we look for fossils, we teach about them. We run a kids camp every summer out here in Colorado. You can get on fossilposse.com and check that out. We also got our museum going, and with that being said, I want to thank Everyone out there, all you guys, your parents, your friends, everyone that's been making incredible donations to our museums. We've been raising a little bit of money, which is terrific. So our museum is going to keep getting a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger all the time. So hopefully when you guys make it out here soon, this summer, we're going to have even cooler stuff for you to see. More fossils, more big dinosaurs like this guy right here, and all kinds of neat stuff. So thank you for everyone that's donated. Some very generous donations. So thank you so much. Keep them coming. You can get on our page at fossilposse.com and help our museum, the museum at Dinosaur Junction. And you can help us grow it. And it's going to be fantastic. Also, I want to remind you, we got Fossil Quest TV show coming up this spring. Uh, we've had, we were asked, when is it going to actually start out? I'll probably start airing the episodes around June 1st. Right around end of May or June 1st. But you guys will know because we got to shoot them. Then we got to edit them. But they're going to be really cool. Fossil Quest. And you guys come out into the field with me to go hunt dinosaurs and crocodiles and sharks and fossils from all kinds of prehistoric creatures. And I think you're really going to like it. With that being said, let's jump right in, okay? Last week, if you guys were with us, we talked about raptors, right? Like Utah raptor, Velociraptor, Dakota raptor, Eoraptor, Microraptor, all kinds of raptors, which were your basic kind of a theropod dinosaur. They ran on two feet, they had the hands like this, and they were pretty fierce little vicious creatures. Pretty simple creatures when you look at them too, maybe an occasional horn or something like that, but your basic dinosaur shape. Today, we're looking at some crazy cool dinosaurs. And I'm talking about stegosaurs. I'm talking about ankylosaurs or ankylosaurs. I'm talking about the armored dinosaurs and the stegosaurs. We call them nature's walking weapons because they're really cool. If you look at some of these animals, you guys are very familiar with stegosaurs. This is my friend Steggy right here. And Steggy would have been about maybe four years old as a stegosaurus. Steggy's pretty small. You see my hand right next to his head. It's pretty small. But Steggy, like all stegosaurs and most stegosaurs, and believe it or not, there's not just stegosaurus. There's a whole family of stegosaurs. And what they're typically uh, identified by is usually it's two rows. Here's one here and one here. Two rows of plates or spikes or big growths called, that come out of the skin that go down their back all the way to their tail. And then their tail, generally speaking, had spikes on them. Some of them just had little kind of little, little teeny nubs or spikes, little plates. Some of them had the big spikes on them. But there's lots of different kinds of stegosaurs. The one you, you're most familiar with is stegosaurus. That's what steggy is here. And this toy right here, that's stegosaurus. That's one of the most common, most recognizable ones. You see those, those big spikes at the end of his tail right there. And believe it or not, stegosaurus is actually the Colorado state fossil. 
the Colorado State Dinosaurs. Most of you guys know where I am here. I'm in Colorado. I'm in the mountains of Colorado. And the most stegosaur fossils ever found, and the very first stegosaurus fossils ever found, were found here in Colorado. And in fact, right down the street from where I'm sitting just a couple summers ago, I found what appears to be stegosaurus footprints. And they're really cool, which means just down the street from where I'm sitting, where I'm talking to you guys from, Stegosaurus walked around here about 155 million years ago. As most of you guys know, Stegosaurus was a Jurassic era dinosaur, right? And you guys remember the three periods of the dinosaurs, the three, era, three periods? The first one was the Triassic, the middle one was the Jurassic, like the movies, and the last one was the Cretaceous period. And then the big, the big asteroid hit and changed everything. But that middle time period, the Jurassic, that's when stegosaurs really flourished. And that's also when the armored dinosaurs like Ankylosaurus kind of appeared, their cousins appeared, and then they moved into the Cretaceous and took over as well. There's Ankylosaurus right there. You're familiar with him? He's got the big spikes and horns on his body and his head, and he's got that big sledgehammer tail. Let me put it right in the middle of my nose. His tail was like a giant hammer. And this guy probably got about 10 to 14,000 pounds. That's pretty big. That's about the size of a full-grown African elephant. That's how heavy it was. But he was low to the ground. He was low and long and super heavy. And a lot of that weight came from these horns. <clears throat> Let's talk about a lot of these armored dinosaurs and stegosaurs. The things that they had, they had horns, right? They had spikes. They had plates. They had things called osteoderms. You guys ever heard that word? That's kind of a weird word, osteoderms. And one of the best examples of that is another animal that lived during the dinosaur times and actually is still alive today, crocodiles, right? And we know during the dinosaur times, crocodiles got super huge, right? Like Dinosuchus, he got almost 40 feet long. And believe it or not, there was other crocodiles that were bigger than that that came after the dinosaurs died out. So for those of you that love the giant crocodiles, there was some super big ones. Yeah. Yes. Hey, guys, I'm sorry. I usually say that. I totally forgot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk for about 10, 15 minutes, and then I'm going to take your questions afterwards because that allows me to get a lot of information out, and you guys come up with your questions. So we'll do the first part talking and the second part questions, and we'll try to get to them all because I know you guys got a lot of questions. So crocodiles, they're still around today, and one of the things you notice about crocodiles and alligators is their skin, right? When you see a crocodile going through the water, Right? You usually see the top of his head, and you see all these little things sticking off his back. They're like little spiky things off of his skin. What those are called is osteoderms. And I actually have one right here. And what an osteoderm is, is it's a piece of bone. If you look at that, it's flat, but it has a little thing sticking up the top. It's kind of triangular shape, but it's round too. And so he had dozens and dozens of these on their backs, crocodiles did, and alligators and a lot of dinosaurs. And what this would do is it was not attached to your skeleton. You know, like your limb bones and your arm bones are connected to everything which connects to your neck and your spine and your head. These are not connected. They just kind of floated there above the spine and in the meat and in the muscle and the skin grew over these. So when you see these nodules sticking up off a crocodile's back or an alligator's back, there's little bones inside of that. So it makes their hide or their skin really super tough. And to give you an idea, this is a foot from a modern crocodile. This crocodile was about five or six feet long. You can see his nails right there, his big fingernails sticking off the end. But look at the skin on that. Look how super rugged and strong an alligator's skin is. You can see these tough, like scaly things right here. And this is a small alligator. So if you can imagine what the skin of a dinosaur would have been like, a, a dinosaur like Stegosaurus that was 30 feet long and weighed as much as an African elephant, maybe even a little bit bigger. These big plates on Stegosaurus's back, just like osteoderms on a crocodile, they weren't attached to anything, which is kind of weird. When you find a fossilized Stegosaurus, those plates were just kind of floating there. So when this guy was alive, those plates grew out of the skin, just like a crocodile has those bony osteoderms. So kind of, these are kind of like giant osteoderms. Now let's take a closer look at one of these ones. They actually got really big. Remember I told you a big stegosaurus could be 30 feet long? 
Well, look at the size of this plate right here. We call these plates because if you notice, it is big and round, just like a dinner plate. And if I turn it sideways, look how thin it is. It's super thin. But in real life, if you see all these little lines and stuff going, all these little marks and lines going through this, just like your arms, you have veins that go through your arms, right? And blood goes through those veins. So in real life, these things, these giant plates, would have had lots of blood flowing in and around them, kind of like your body and your bones, right? Blood keeps things healthy, and it would keep these healthy. So all those blood and veins would have been covered with really heavy skin, right? Skin like that alligator foot I just showed you. It would have been super strong, super heavy, tough skin so that nothing can cut it that easily, right? And because there was so much blood flowing through these, Stegosaurus's big uh, plates on his back were probably not used to defend himself against an animal like Allosaurus. If Allosaurus is going to attack him, a Stegosaurus didn't lean in and say, well, I'm gonna, you can bite these plates and so you don't hit my body. Because what would happen is if he bit this plate, he'd bleed really bad, right? It'd be like if I cut my arm off, that would not be good, right? I'd bleed really badly. So Mother Nature, in her infinite wisdom, probably did not want these to be a defense mechanism because if an Allosaurus bit these, it would just bite like a potato chip. And then Stegosaurus would bleed really bad because remember, they're super thin. So there wouldn't be much to keep it strong. But what they did do is, if you notice on this Stegosaurus right here, you see how these are orangey red color? And if you remember from us talking before about the colors of dinosaurs, and you know how you guys have asked this question, what color were dinosaurs? We really don't know. So when you see pictures in books and movies and toys, that color that's on those, the colors that they put on them are just made up by a scientist or an artist to make them look really cool. There's no skin, there's no photographs. We don't have the soft tissue left over from dinosaurs to tell us what they really look like as far as color. We can only compare them to reptiles that live today and why they have those colors. Like an iguana or a chameleon that live in the jungle that have bright colors to blend in, or maybe a Komodo dragon that's just big and kind of brown because it doesn't have to blend in. It's the toughest thing around, right? But these big plates, very likely Stegosaurus could do something really interesting with these. Now, a lot of you guys have seen me do this example before, but I know as, as human beings, we kind of get angry sometimes. We get angry at our brothers and sisters or our mom and dad. And if we do, we, like, we get so upset, we want to hold our breath, right? I'm so angry. And when we hold our breath, what happens to our faces? They turn red, right? Our faces turn really red because we're so mad, we're so upset, right? And all that blood rushes to our face and it makes it red. And with all that blood in these plates, it's really possible that Stegosaurus could actually make them kind of turn red or pinkish color. And an animal that sees another animal with red or pink colors on it, that's nature's defense mechanism to say, beware, be, beware, be aware that I'm not in a good mood. So when you see the color red in nature, usually it means something is angry or poisonous or dangerous. So other animals want to stay away from that. And also, Stegosaurus wasn't one of the smartest animals, unfortunately. If I show you this toy and I show you, and I tell you again that this guy was as big as an African elephant and 30 feet long from head to tail, look how teeny tiny his little head is. Now we've seen Tyrannosaurus rex. Tyrannosaurus rex has a gigantic head, right? Stegosaurus has a teeny tiny little head. In fact, a full-grown stegosaurus that's as big or bigger than an African elephant, his head would only be about this big. That's pretty tiny considering how gigantic he got, right? And because he had a small head, he had a really teeny tiny brain. In fact, pound for pound, stegosaurus had one of, if not the smallest brain of almost all dinosaurs. It was about the size of a golf ball or a walnut, some people say. So he wasn't real smart. The only thing he could probably do really well was smell, right? And then fight pretty well and eat and have babies. And that's pretty much all he thought about was having babies, eating and pooping pretty much. I think that was it, right? But he wasn't totally defenseless. If we talk about Stegosaurus, one of the things that pops in your, your, your mind is those big tail spikes, right? These spikes right here, one, two, three, four. There's four, if I can get through, you see it, four spikes on the end of that tail and that, is where Stegosaurus really came to life. 
Look at that picture. That's kind of a normal type picture you see. Stegosaurus fighting Allosaurus, trying to whip them with that tail. And you might look at that and go, well, what can a tail do, right? Tails are super strong. Tails are really strong. You could, in fact, Stegosaurus could probably knock a car across the street. Here's a picture of Ankylosaurus trying to defend himself from T-Rex. And what's he doing? He's got his tail. And the end of Ankylosaurus' tail was pretty unique as well. There's the end of Ankylosaurus' tail. He didn't have spikes. He had a giant hammer, like a sledgehammer. And what he could do is just smack the heck out of another dinosaur and make him get hurt and hopefully get him to run away. Even something as big as Tyrannosaurus Rex, trying to attack something much smaller than him, like Ankylosaurus, Tyrannosaurus Rex does not want to get injured. Predators do not want to get injured. In Africa, lions, leopards, cheetahs, they do not want to get injured when they're trying to get some food, when they're trying to attack something. So they'll always attack something they think they can take down. And even though Ankylosaurus was so much smaller than T-Rex, if Ankylosaurus hit T-Rex just right in his foot or in his ankle, what might happen? He could really mess up T-Rex's ankle. He might break the bones in T-Rex's ankle. And even a T-Rex that's that giant, what happens if he can't walk or run? He's going to die. So even though Ankylosaurus was much smaller, something like T-Rex would likely want to be careful of him. But here's the spike I want to show you for Stegosaurus. Look at the size of those spikes. So Stegosaurus had four of these. And if you remember our talk about the horn dinosaurs, this giant fossilized bone spike would have had a big cover on it, just like that. And it would have been a big cover made out of keratin, the same stuff our fingernails are made out of. So this spike, as big as it is, this fossilized spike would have been much bigger in real life and could have done some real, real damage. Because any animal that's as big as an African elephant is super strong. I don't know if you've ever seen an elephant go against an automobile or a car, but an elephant can flip a car over no problem. So if you've got an animal that's as big or bigger than an elephant, it's going to be super strong as well. Well, I think that kind of covers the armored dinosaurs. They're very strange. Horns, spikes, plates, all kinds of stuff like that. They came in all shapes and colors. <clears throat> Here's one I want to point out. This is a kentrosaur. He's in the family of stegosaurs. He didn't live in the United States as far as I know. I don't think many have been discovered around here. But if you notice him, look at how unique he is. He's got giant horns coming off his shoulders. Imagine trying to walk through the woods if you had huge spikes coming off your shoulders. So they came in all shapes and sizes. They're very unique. Some of them were very small. There's a type of ankylosaur called, it's an armored dinosaur called a minmi that was only about the size of a German shepherd dog or a golden retriever. So they weren't all gigantic, but the big ones sure are super, super cool, aren't they? They are unique animals. I highly recommend getting books and reading more about them because we're discovering more and more armored dinosaurs all the time. And also, remember I told you that there's likely some stegosaurus footprints right down the street here in Colorado? Well, there's also likely, I found some footprints that look like they're to an Ankylosaurus as well. So we not only had Stegosaurus armored dinosaur, but the armored dinosaur Ankylosaurus walking around right here in my neighborhood many, many millions of years ago. So pretty cool stuff. I think right now we're gonna take some questions because we've got about 15 minutes left. So Lily, go ahead and start some questions going. Okay, um, so a couple of these are before you started talking, so you might have already mentioned them. But okay. Uh, Walker wants to know how big a Stegosaurus is. Walker, my man Walker is watching. Hey, you guys, Walker started his own TV show, by the way. So if your parents let you get on YouTube, you wanna look up Walker's World of Wonder. He does a great job talking about all kinds of cool stuff. So definitely check that out. Walker, Stegosaurus, the, the main one we know of, the most popular Stegosaurus, got about 30 feet long. That's probably as long as two elephants. An elephant from, the, from his trunk to his tail is probably about 15 feet. So if you take two of those, right, 15 to 15 is 30. So Stegosaurus got about 30 feet long and weighed about the same amount as an elephant. That seems like he should weigh more. But if you think about it, a lot of Stegosaurus' size is these huge plates and the spikes. So he was super heavy, probably was as heavy as, a, as an elephant, 13 to 15,000 pounds and about 30 feet long. But there's other Stegosaurus that were much smaller, maybe the size of a, a cow. Remember the family of Stegosaurs 
And this particular one is Stegosaurus, right? So we have lots of dinosaurs have those names. That's about, they varied in size. The Stegosaurus, about 30 feet and about 13 to 15,000 pounds. Next question. Stella would like to know Stella. how the spikes form. Stella, how are you, sweetie? Great to hear you're from California. How, and her question is, how were the spikes formed? She always has the best questions. Spikes were formed just like your fingernails. When you're a teeny tiny baby inside your mommy, at one point, your fingernails weren't there yet. Your fingers were. They were just kind of skin. And at some point, the skin cells start to change. And those changing skin, skin cells is what, make thing, what makes different things on your body, right? Your eyelashes, your eyeballs, your hair, your lips, right? And just like the same, your fingernails just started to grow. And as they grew, the whole surrounding area started to grow and get bigger and bigger. It's kind of like if you look at a, if you ever go to a farm or see a rodeo and you look at a baby cow or a little baby steer or a goat or a little baby goat, right? They have little teeny nubs that start growing out of their head, kind of like a plant. If you think of a plant, a plant's a seed, right? Even a tree. And as it grows, it gets bigger and the cells divide, it gets bigger. And pretty soon, this little teeny seed that had a little green shoot coming out of it turns into a tree with giant branches and bark and all kinds of stuff. And things just grow. And as they grow, they get bigger and they specialize, right? A tree turns into, gets bark on the outside and the inside soft, and it gets branches and leaves and maybe fruit or nuts. So the cells start to specialize and they turn into that thing that they were destined to be. So just like that, spikes and horns, plates, they start from nothing and they slowly start getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Terrific question, Stella. Thanks for watching. Thanks for asking. All right, next question. Um, I think you touched on this, but Mina would like to know how the stegosaurus used its tail. Mina. Great question, Mina. Mina's question is how did the stegosaurus use his tail? You know what? Just like a dog. I mean, who knows if he wagged his tail and he was happy, but just like a dog's tail wags back and forth, the same thing with Stegosaurus or any animal that has big tails. They just kind of hang there, right? But they're not just hanging there. They're used for balance. Dogs don't really use them for balance too much, probably. But especially a giant dinosaur like a Tyrannosaurus rex, that tail would be used like a seesaw. So the back end where his tail is would balance out the front end where that giant head is. And his middle section where his legs were are kind of like the middle of a seesaw, and they would keep them perfectly balanced. Those were the dinosaurs that walked on two feet. The ones that walked on four feet, like these guys, that tail was probably there to help them when they walked. It would kind of go back and forth to help them balance, right, as they're walking, just like lizards do today. Maybe they touch the ground, they're not sure. But that tail's the animals that have tail spikes. Remember, like I said, Ankylosaurus right here with the hammer on his tail, and then Stegosaurus with the spikes on his tail those tails would have been super strong. I mean super strong because their tails would have been about this big around, solid muscle, and they could whack the heck out of anything and got too close to them. Some animals today, like, like modern iguanas, an iguana lizard, or even young crocodiles, young alligators, lots of younger lizards, they'll use their tail to whip something. If something's coming up on them and they get afraid, like maybe they're gonna get attacked, they'll puff up with air, so they look bigger than they are. A lot of animals will do that. And they'll whip that tail and try and smack whatever it is that's trying to bother them and try and scare it away. So there's lots of different uses for tails. Maybe to balance you out. Maybe to try to, to defend yourself. Maybe to attack something. Yeah, so great question. Yeah. Walker would like to know, why did the big dinosaurs die out and not the small ones? Walker, again, Walker's Wonderful World of, Walker's World of Wonder on YouTube. Why did the big dinosaurs die off? That is one of the questions that scientists are still wondering today. And as, as I tell you guys, that's one of the things that makes science so exciting. And I recommend studying more science because there's so many answers to learn out there in this world. The whole world of answers is right outside your, your door, right there. And that's what's so cool about science is the adventure of discovering this. And that question, Walker, is one of the things that keeps lots of scientists awake at night. Why are lizards, turtles, crocodiles, right, snakes, all animals that live side by side with dinosaurs, why are they all here but dinosaurs are gone? Well, one of the reasons is when that asteroid struck, it devastated the world. It knocked out all the food supplies for all the animals for a long, long time. Not all of them, little things were able to survive. And the good analogy I've used in the past is what's easier to take care of, 
and feed, an elephant or a mouse? A mouse, right? Because you don't need that much food. You don't need that much room to keep it. An elephant eats so much food every day, it would eat you out of house and home like that fast. So one of the reasons the big dinosaurs died out is because their food supply just disappeared, right? So when that asteroid struck, after the dust finally cleared and the fires burnt out and the waves subsided and the temperatures came down, really nothing bigger than a sheep. I know it's kind of funny, but nothing bigger than a sheep was alive. Nothing. Everything else bigger than a sheep died. So one of the reasons the big dinosaurs aren't around is their food supply simply disappeared and they had no more food and they just died. But smaller animals did survive. And as you know, Walker, the smaller animals over millions of years, they specialized and branched out. Because when they talk about life as being a tree and the branches of a family tree coming off, that's a good analogy, but it's actually a better, a better analogy or, or comparison is a bush because life breaks off and grows all different directions and specializes and tries new things. So it's more like a crazy bush of life rather than a tree of life. But as you know, that's, what, that's a great question, Walker. Still trying to figure out today why some things, uh, why, why is Archaeopteryx, Archaeopteryx gone? Why are any of the winged little, or the little raptors that are around, why is he a raptor gone? Why do we have iguanas and turtles and lizards and crocs, but not the smaller dinosaurs? We're just not sure. That's what's fun about science is trying to figure it out. Next question. Dylan and Logan. Dylan and Logan. Hi, guys. What is the strongest armored dinosaur? The strongest armored dinosaur. I like those kind of questions. Now, as always, remember, we don't have any video or film or photographs, so we don't really know. All we have left is the fossils. And as I always say, fossils never lie, right? So if you have big, giant fossils of big armored dinosaurs, chances are those were the strongest. And I would wager to guess, I would be willing to bet, that Ankylosaurus was probably one of, if not the strongest armored dinosaurs so far discovered. Remember, there's still hundreds of dinosaurs probably have not even been discovered yet. But so far, <clears throat> Ankylosaurus was probably about 30 feet long, just like Stegosaurus, but weighed a little bit more. Ankylosaurus was a little more solid. He was kind of like a giant pickup truck that was weighted down with rocks, right, compared to just a pickup truck with an empty pickup on it. So he was super strong and super heavy. So I would say Ankylosaurus is probably the strongest armored dinosaur, but who knows? We don't know. That's what's fun about it is we're always trying to discover new things. Good question. <clears throat> All right. Ava, All right. Would Ava. Would like to know, have you found any new footprints or other fossils since she saw you in August? Hi, Ava. It's good to see you again. Actually, yes. I try to go out as much as I possibly can. And right towards the end of August, I found some new footprints <clears throat> not too far from here. And we think what they are is a young Allosaurus or maybe a Ceratosaurus, right? So it was a, definitely a meat-eating dinosaur. It had three toes. And they weren't real big, but that's probably what it was. Because the only reason we guess it's those dinosaurs is because those are the dinosaurs that fit that description, theropods or dinosaurs that walked on two feet, meat-eaters and lived in this area during the time period, the Jurassic time period. So that's why we guess it was one of those. I also found some new bones too. One of them looks like a rib bone or maybe part of a limb bone, like an arm or a leg bone too. So great, great, great questions. Thank you so much for asking. And I'm always getting out there to find so, more, so much more. So make sure you tune in and we'll talk to you again for sure. And we've got some more questions. What we got? All right, Elliot and Theo. Elliot and Theo, hi guys. Would like to know how many species of stegosaurs and ankylosaurs there are. Wow, that's a really good question. And as I always say, being Billy the paleontologist, I love dinosaurs but I do not ever, ever brag that I know everything because I do not know everything, especially since we're learning new things all the time that you can't ever know everything, especially about dinosaurs. And I do not know the answer to that question. I can tell you that there's probably a dozen or more different types of Ankylosaurus <clears throat> or Nodosaurus, as well as Stegosaurus, different cousins and different, different families. Because remember, they lived over millions of years. So there's lots of cousins that stretch out over long periods of time. And actually, not too long ago, a few years ago, they discovered an animal in the same family as Ankylosaurus called a Nodosaur. And it was discovered in a mine, in a coal mine. I think it was in Canada. And a coal mine, if you know what coal is, coal is ancient plants and jungles. That's why they call them fossil fuels. 
It's like an Amazon jungle that's been packed down and turned into coal. But at one point, all that coal was a lush, lush environment with jungle. It was next to an ocean. So you had water, marine life and stuff. And they found a cousin to this guy. And it turned out it was the most perfectly preserved dinosaur ever found. And if you want to see it, <clears throat> get your parents, get on Google and Google best fossilized dinosaur ever. And you're going to see this guy. It looks a lot like that. He's got a little head and spikes and horns. And it's so well preserved, it looks like it just laid down and died. It's so cool. So definitely check that out. That's one of the most well-preserved ones Eddie, ever found so far. A great question. All right, next one, Vic. Uh, Ollie wants to know, is Ankylosaurus stronger than Stegosaurus? Oliver, hey, pal, how are you? Nice to see you. Is Ankylosaurus stronger than Stegosaurus? Good question. They lived at different times, so they never met each other in real life. They were millions of years apart. Remember, Stegosaurus was the Jurassic period. Ankylosaurus was the Cretaceous period. They probably were very similar in strength. Um, Stegosaurus was higher off the ground because he was wider and bigger and taller. Ankylosaurus was more, more fight, more small, kind of like a bulldog fighting a golden retriever kind of thing, right? They probably didn't fight because they both ate plants. There was no reason to, to fight. But again, they didn't meet each other. So it's no way to really tell. It's kind of like who would win, uh, Superman versus Batman. Who knows? I mean, it's not real. It's no, never, they never really met in real life, at least in the movies, I guess they did. But. Uh, it's, a, it's a tough question to, to say. I would say they're probably about the same. Oh, good question. All right, how much time do we have left? Uh, about five minutes. Well, five I minutes. I would like to know, could a rhino beat a stegosaurus? Ooh, good question. I like these comparison ones. Could a rhinoceros beat a stegosaurus? I would guess, me personally, no. Not, no way, no how. Because a rhinoceros is a big animal. I've ridden horses around rhinoceros in the wild in Africa, and they're big. And luckily they didn't bother us because they didn't see us. We're on horses. They looked at us and saw the horse. They didn't see a person. And they know the horse wasn't a threat, so they didn't pay attention to us. And they're huge. Rhinoceros, are, they can be two or three, 4,000 pounds. They're gigantic animals. And they have that big horn on their head that could definitely do some damage. But Stegosaurus was about three or four times heavier and bigger and had four spikes, not just one. And Stegosaurus, the one thing you gotta remember is that those spikes were in the end of his tail. It never got near his head. A rhinoceros would have to put his face right in close to the Stegosaurus where he might get injured badly, where a Stegosaurus could step back and hit him with that tail without ever getting his head near the fight. So I would guess Stegosaurus could beat a rhinoceros pretty easily. I hate to say that because that rhinoceros is strong, but that gives you an idea how strong a stegosaurus would have been for sure. Good question, though. Next one. Mina asks, why did the ankylosaurus fight against the T-Rex? Mina, great question. Why did the ankylosaurus fight against the T-Rex, like in this picture right here? I think that's a pretty simple question. I think the answer would be to save his life. I think the T-Rex is probably trying to attack the Ankylosaurus and eat him for dinner because Ankylosaurus ate plants. So he's not trying to eat the, the Tyrannosaurus, right? So I think he's just protecting himself or maybe protecting if there's some babies around. A mom always wants to try and protect babies if there's around or young ones. But I think it's just trying to defend itself. I think that would be the only reason an Ankylosaurus would ever take on a Tyrannosaurus Rex is to try and defend itself. So great question. Great question. You guys, I think we're running out of time right now, but make sure to get on fossilposse.com. I know a lot of you guys have more questions. You can email us anytime on the website, fossilposse.com. Get help your, your mom or dad get you on there. And you can email us any questions, right? We can keep talking. Remember, Friday morning, today's Wednesday, right? Friday morning is our next episode. I think I might take a tip from my friend Walker in Walker's World of Wonder, which you can see on YouTube. I think we're going to talk about prehistoric sharks. He did that on his last show. It was really cool. So we're going to talk about prehistoric sharks on Friday that lived alongside the dinosaurs, of course, in the ocean. And they probably ate dinosaurs if they got in the water, but they were big and they were nasty. And we have lots of teeth to prove it. So fossilposse.com, you guys, thank you so much. And thank you for all the donations. Keep them coming. Our museum is growing. It's going to be a fantastic summer. Be patient with your family. Be patient with your parents. And everything's going to be better. And thanks for joining. We'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.